Alright, I know this uh, review looks a little more scuffed than usual. Uh, just, I don't really uh, feel the need to put too much effort into it tonight because, well, the Kings didn't put any effort into the game tonight either. Um, it was painful to watch uh, for how much uh, I've really believe that okay we're a good team you know we just need to to get going a little bit we got to get on a little bit of a hot streak and we're gonna be in a playoff push tonight just proved we are not a good team at all like our, our team is, is is very bad and it showed tonight uh before i talk about the team uh bally sports <laughs> it's the new home of king's hockey and i just really sucks for me fox sports west is like an a classic you know comfort of mine uh going back to when i was a little kid and you know my favorite thing to do was to watch kings games uh it's sad it's sad not seeing the fox sports west little scoreboard i think that's the best scoreboard in in hockey the new one taking up the whole bottom of the screen but only using half of it and then having things pop up on top i don't like it i hope that there's some changing around and i also just thought the the new and improved graphics that they would use to kind of pop up the standings or show stats it just seemed like a little kid who like learned transitions and powerpoint and does it for everything it was just not needed um business is business though so no going back uh so sad day sad day for the nostalgia of king's games and watching them on tv if i have to talk about the game i'll say cal peterson played really well he always does uh he doesn't get the support he needs this game it just it really showed that this team lacks oomph it lacks players Besides Kopitar, who can just do something when something needs to be done. Kopitar can do that. When we need to score, when we're not playing well, you see him kind of carry that the team on his back a little bit. You see him raise his game, play a little harder, and that's Kopi. He's always done that. I understand that everybody can't be Kopi. And I also understand everybody can't be a McDavid or a McKinnon who just changes the game when they're on the ice and can completely turn momentum in a single shift. But we really have nobody that can even do it slightly. Uh, Drew Doughty tries, but Doughty's the type of guy where when he tries too hard, that's when his game completely falls apart. He he has the skating ability he has the mind to be more offensive but what we saw the last two seasons it just ruins his game and so you can't rely on drew dowdy on the back end a guy like sean walker is i guess our next best offensive defenseman and he just doesn't have the confidence he doesn't have i think the skill uh to do anything to you know take over to kind of you know quarterback not a power play but quarterback uh, a good offensive cycle shift he just doesn't have that ability and then when we get to the forward group it gets even worse because we saw Kopitar get put on the line with Athanasio and Kempe I thought that was kind of a, a good idea because I think Kempe and Athanasio look good tonight I also thought Austin Wagner looked good um, there's a lot of discussion kind of about oh how come austin wagner has a spot on the team and matt luff is getting waived but i'm a big fan of austin wagner i know he doesn't score i know he gets breakaways and it results in nothing and you just you know it right off the bat when you see him on a breakaway you know you're not going to get the goal but he does bring something extra he has an x factor to his game and that's the insane speed he draws penalties so even though he's not scoring goals he's benefiting the team that way and he plays physical he plays hard he you know he's like i said before he's kind of grown into his fourth line energy guy role uh a la kyle clifford um maybe just not as physical and a little bit more speed and skill 
although the points totals are kind of the same. But anyways, Kopitar gets put on that line, and what happens to the first line is you really realize uh, that Brown and Ayafalo without Kopitar are just, it's not an NHL first line. It's not a contending team's first line. Brownie is great with Kopitar, and that's why they play together, and it, it's a good match. And same with Ayafalo. He works well with them. I'm not saying that the line is bad and that they should they should get rid of it or anything like that, but there's there's not much that those guys bring extra to the game. It's it's kind of still relying on Kopitar, and it's putting Kopitar with players that he works well with and enhance Kopitar, but really we need to be enhancing the team as a whole, not just our best player. And so I guess the question that gets asked is who on this team right now or who in the future can be another X-Factor guy, can be a guy who when the team is losing, when the team's not playing well, can take the puck and make a play and just take over for a shift, take over for half a period, you know, really try and change the momentum themselves. I think the Kings organization, definitely me as a fan, and I think a lot of fans would look to Gabe Velarde as being that kind of player. He's not made that jump this year. He's definitely had his ups and downs. I think right now he's stagnating. I'm not sure if it's because of the schedule and it's just kind of building up. And, you know, I know for, you know, his back, it it doesn't seem like it's a huge concern. But you do have to wonder if that's still a little bit lingering and maybe hampering him down a little bit because he just doesn't look like the player he did at the end of last year and at the beginning of this year. And so that's concerning that he's not making that step, that he's not that player that can kind of just just pop a little bit more. Um, and then, in my opinion, I think Kempe is another guy who could be like that. And I think he's he's shown times where he has kind of taken over games, where he's... He's, you know, gone above his his kind of normal level and, and excelled when the team has needed him. But the problem with Kempe is just consistency. And, it, it, it you know, you can't rely on Kempe at all because he's going to be very good for you for a couple games and then he's going to disappear for a few games. And, you know, I think right now he's a little snake bit. Tonight he had that good chance against Martin Jones, but, my God, Martin Jones is just killing us this year. It's... Unbelievable. I guess that's the only good thing to look forward to for tomorrow is they're not going to play Jones back-to-back, -back, right? They might because he's playing amazing, and now they're in the hunt in the playoffs as well. So maybe they do go back-to-back -back with Jones. Uh, I wouldn't blame them, but hopefully they kind of stick traditionally and will just uh, rotate out and will face Devin Dubnik tomorrow. But we'll see. I think... Uh, I think this was a bad loss in terms of, you know, placement in the standings and kind of hopes for the rest of the year. But hopefully it's a loss that uh, gets Todd McClellan to, you know, really fire up the team. And uh, it has to be a learning experience because the pro what they did tonight, it just wasn't good enough. It, it just wasn't good enough. And... It's up to the coach to change that. It's up to your best players to change that. Like I, you know, like I mentioned, Kempe, Velarde, these guys that should be and have qualities of being a player who can step up need to start stepping up. I would also say that Athanasiu, you know, he's shown times where he stepped up. He needs to try and do that a little bit more. Uh, Jared Anderson Dolan as well. I mean, obviously he's a rookie. He's playing in, you know, his. 10th or something game but he's had moments where he's shown like he could be that kind of player too so tomorrow night someone's got to step up they gotta they gotta win i mean if you if you lose again um it's almost like the season's done sell everybody bring up the young guys and just wait for next year because that's pretty much how i feel right now but We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you did, I don't blame you if you don't because 
I just wanted to uh, stop watching halfway through the third when <laughs> I just couldn't take anymore the, the lack of effort and just the lack of skill that this team has. It's uh, it's pretty pretty tough right now, especially when you compare it to, to higher moments this year when we looked good. It's uh, disappointing, I guess, is the best way to describe it. But thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.